Welcome, everyone. This is our first in-person race summit. We've been wanting to do this for a couple of years now, and it's, it's finally happening. So thank you so much for being here. We have people here from 22 different states and 15 different countries. So I really want to thank everyone who traveled from out of town to be here, especially if you're coming from overseas. So I'd like to share a little bit about um, how Ray has grown and what the Ray team has been working on recently. So Ray started as a small project at UC Berkeley and has grown far beyond what we imagined at the outset. So today we have over 700 contributors and developers globally, and these include long-term collaborations spanning many different companies over many years. As the meetup scene has re-emerged, we've seen the Ray community extend from Colombia to Canada to Japan. And just a few weeks ago, a Ray event in China featured production Ray use cases from half a dozen different companies and over 700 people participating. Ray has seen significant growth on GitHub, matching or exceeding some of the most popular open source distributed systems out there. But the thing I really want to tell you about, the thing that's most exciting to me, is the problems people are solving with Ray. So let me give you a few examples. Ant Group is one of the largest Ray contributors and has one of the largest production Ray deployments. They deploy Ray on over 450,000 CPU cores. That's an absolutely enormous scale. And they use Ray to power use cases ranging from online learning to fraud detection to financial decision making. What they've achieved with Ray is, is really breathtaking. Shopify will be talking about how they built Merlin, their machine learning platform, and that, how that enabled them to go from primarily using TensorFlow to being able to scale TensorFlow, PyTorch, Scikit-Learn, XGBoost, and the whole mach machine learning ecosystem, and how that sped things up for prototyping as well as production. Instacart has over a billion products and millions of customers, and they use machine learning across the board for scheduling, fulfillment, predicting delivery arrival times. And they, they trained tens of thousands of machine learning models. And they were able to speed up training times from days down to hours. And the difference between days and hours is enormous when it comes to developer velocity, being able to move quickly, to iterate quickly, and to ship products quickly. So they'll be talking more about their story as well. Amazon is another impressive use case. They use Ray to scale a variety of different workloads. And one in particular that I want to mention is a data compaction workload, which processes petabytes of data every single day. And they were able to reduce costs and increase scalability, each by more than an order of magnitude. And these are jobs operating at a pretty significant scale, so this is not a small feat. And as a final uh, exciting example, there will be a talk tomorrow on how, how to use Ray to design strategies for reducing traffic congestion at the upcoming World Cup in Qatar uh, later this year. So these are a few examples, just a sample of the ways in which people are using Ray and the kinds of presentations we'll see here at this summit. So I'm really excited for all the upcoming talks today and tomorrow uh, and the fact that you can all be here. So with that, I'd like to share a little bit more about what the Ray team has been working on recently. So we're going to share a couple Ray announcements today. But before we get there, I'd like to say a little bit about what we've learned from working on Ray over the past few years. So when we initially started Ray, our user base consisted primarily of advanced users, people, uh, distributed systems engineers, you know, computer science researchers, machine learning experts. And our journey at that point, our goal at that point, was to make Ray more broadly useful for a broader audience. And that led up to our first virtual Ray Summit in late 2020. Um, at that event, almost two years ago, we announced Ray 1.0. And Ray 1.0 came with key features for improving the usability of Ray, things like auto-scaling, automatic memory management, support for Windows. And at this point, Ray had two relatively mature libraries. We had a, the start of a few other libraries, but there were two relatively mature libraries which were RLib for reinforcement learning and RayTune for hyperparameter tuning. We've learned a lot since then. So since Ray 1.0, a large number of companies have been looking around to revamp their machine learning infrastructure. And these companies have increasingly been turning to Ray. 
This has given us the opportunity to work closely with a number of companies, ranging from Uber to Shopify to OpenAI to Ant Group, as they've gone on this journey of building their next generation of machine learning infrastructure. And so I'm going to share a little bit about what we've learned as we've seen the common pain points and lessons from all of these different companies. We tried to take all of these lessons and distill them into the next version of Ray, which we're announcing today. So today, we're announcing Ray 2.0. The Ray team is incredibly excited for this release. It's something that's been years in the making, and it's been informed by all of our experience working with many different companies along their journey over the past few years to build and scale their machine learning infrastructure. So with Ray 2.0, we've built a version of Ray that is simpler, that is faster, and that is production ready. So I'll say a little bit about each of these points. We've simplified a number of the critical user journeys and uh, pain points. One of the common pain points or difficulties was around unifying different workloads. For example, applications would have bottlenecks in training, and as you would scale training, the bottleneck would shift to data processing, and there would be a need to have common infrastructure for scaling and unifying these workloads. Another common pain point is around flexibility. People would, many companies were tied to a particular framework like TensorFlow. But in order to move quickly, they wanted to be able to use not only TensorFlow, but also PyTorch, Hugging Face, XGBoost, or the whole machine learning ecosystem. They also wanted the flexibility to be able to do reinforcement learning, or to use graph neural networks, or other strategies that didn't fit neatly into their predefined uh, standardized machine learning workflow. So as part of Ray 2.0, we're introducing the Ray AI runtime, Ray Air, which solves these problems and provides a unified, scalable toolkit for machine learning applications. Another common pain point that we saw was around model deployment. Companies, it's one thing to deploy a handful of machine learning models. It's another thing entirely to deploy several hundred machine learning models, especially when those models may depend on each other in a graph of dependencies. The models may need to scale independently. Some of the models may be tiny and fit in a fraction of a CPU or GPU whereas other models may be enormous and span many machines. So as part of 2.0, we're announcing RaceServe deployment graphs, which solve this problem and provide a simple Python interface for scalable model composition. And if you're interested in these talks or these topics, there will be a variety of talks throughout today and tomorrow saying more about uh, going more, much more in depth on both of these uh, announcements. I also want to highlight performance. Doing AI requires scaling. If you don't find that to be the case today, you probably will tomorrow. And so we've invested a significant amount since Ray 1.0 in improving performance. And one area I want to call out in particular is the Ray data plane. Data processing and ingest is a core part of any machine learning training workload. And so that's why we've invested a ton in making this faster. And I want to call out the kind of performance benchmarks that this has enabled, you can now use RAID datasets to shuffle, do a distributed shuffle with 100 terabytes of data and get performance that is competitive with dedicated data processing systems. I mean, RAID is a general purpose system. Okay? If you're interested in learning more about this, there will be more talks on the data plane, on data processing in RAID, and performance in RAID 2.0. So I encourage you to check them out as well. We've also put a lot of effort into making Ray production ready with Ray 2.0. So as part of Ray 2.0, we're shipping KubeRay. This is native support for deploying Ray on Kubernetes. And it's actually a great example of a large open source uh, collaboration. This was developed by people at ByteDance, Microsoft, Ant Group, and it's used in their production Ray deployments. And this is uh, KubeRay alone on GitHub has 40 contributors. And in conjunction with Ray Serve, this allows highly available model serving. So you can deploy highly available RaceServe clusters to do model serving with no single point of failure. And there will be many more talks on all of these topics throughout the event. So with all of these features, all these new developments in Ray 2.0, we're incredibly excited for you to try it out and see what you think. So what's next with Ray? The companies presenting here at this summit and the companies we've worked with and collaborated with over the past few years have really achieved impressive results. And these companies are pioneers. They're pioneering the next generation of machine learning infrastructure. 
We want to enable every company to be able to do that. We'd like to get to the point where any developer or any organization can succeed with AI and get value from AI in the way that these organizations have been able to. And we'd like to get to the point where in order to do that, all you need to know is Python. So these are, that's what we're working toward. There's a long way to go to get there still, but hopefully we'll have more to announce down the road. So with that, I'd like to introduce Jan Stoika, one of the co-founders and executive chairman and president of AnyScale. So he'll be coming on stage to tell us more about what we're building at AnyScale and where things are headed with AI. So please welcome Jan. Thank you.